this one's asking, is IF2 polar or nonpolar? IF2 minus polar or nonpolar. So this one's a little bit tricky, right? Uh, because we need to see how to first draw out its Lewis structure. And then from there, we'll see whether it's actually polar or not. Okay? So, with that being said, um, we're going to first figure out how many electrons, um, well, in the valence shell for iodine, fluorine here. Okay? So, we can do it two ways. We can just see if it's on the on a PR table. They're both halogens, so they would have seven each. Or we can also do the electron configuration, which I've been doing for like every single question that I could. So we have start at the most recent um, krypton, the most recent noble gas. Then we go on to the actual rest of it, okay? So we have 4d10, because I know that you have to pass through d levels first. So I'm just gonna label that first. And then we have 5s2. And then we have 5 P5. So looking at the 5 specifically, you will see that 2 plus 5 equals 7, aka how iodine has 7 electrons. Okay? And now fluorine, say, so starts out at helium, because that's the most recent one, or well, the one right before it. And then we have 2s2, 2p5 as well. Okay? And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you count on the periodic table, the P row is actually starting from boron to neon. Well, row, I mean, column 13 through 18. The D subshell starts from column 3 through 12. You can actually count one by one, and you'll see how I actually got these numbers um, when you're counting through them. And also, the S column is 1 and 2. So, with that being said, still 7 as well. Um, but exactly, if you're not comfortable with that, just use the rule of where it is on the periodic table. It's a halogen, comp 17, so seven electrons that can also be used. Okay, but this one has times two because it's IF2. So it's an iodine fluoride ion, iodine difluoride ion, if that's probably going to be the name of it. Okay, so it has 14 here plus seven, and now we see the key thing here there's an extra electron, hence shown by the negative. When there's a negative there, it's another electron added because electrons are negative. If it's positive, it means it was taken away. So 7 plus 14 plus 1. So in total, we have 22 electrons. Okay, now let's go and draw out the actual Lewis structure. We'll put iodine in the middle, okay, because we... Uh, are working with double fluorine, so it only makes sense that the iodine will be in the middle because it's a different one. And then we fill in the rest of the electrons. Um, so, boring ha likes to have seven, so it'll be sharing one right now two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, iodine, two, three, oops, sorry. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what just happened here? Iodine actually does not care about the octet rule in this case. It will willingly have 10 electrons, I guess, around it because it's still stable there. In fact, if you were to get the electron number for each one, you will see, starting with iodine, okay, it has typically wants seven valence electrons. So you subtract how many lone pairs it has. So well, lone electrons, it has six lone electrons. And how many is it sharing? Let me just make sure, yep, two, four, six. How many is it sharing? It's sharing four. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, hmm, maybe I skipped a part. Cause exactly, so right now, fluorine is content. Let's see here. Iodine just wants, oh, well, that's why I miscounted. Iodine is going to be, um, typically, it has one, two, three, four, five more because it's sharing two. So I miscounted there. 
it's gonna have one two three four five more okay but as because of the plus one that's gonna be the six electron here okay and now it makes more sense how iodine was breaking the octet rule is because that plus one electron just makes it stable there and you actually see now how iodine has the negative charge so seven minus six valence electrons plus four over two because it's sharing four okay I mean well six uh, lone electrons and we get six plus two is eight so minus one so that's how iodine actually has this negative one charge the fluorines will hopefully be neutral and you can do the math still six as well but each side is really only sharing two so six plus one does equal seven which makes this zero actually so based on this you can actually see that the iodine is where the negative charge will be kept now it's asking if it's polar or non-polar so with that being said this is where it's a little bit tricky because you have to really visualize this let's start with the electron not the electron number we want the electron pair number okay electron pair number of iodine and for that we figure out how many i guess pairs slash things has attached to it okay we have here two well not two one two three four five so electron pair number for iodine is going to be five okay and i don't remember the shape off the top of my head but we actually refer to our um you know our vesper theory okay that's what we would use to be able to figure that out and in fact more so we have to also find out its molecular geometry as well by now comparing how many bonds it has versus how many lone pairs so it has two of the five bonds two of them i mean of the five things attached to it two of them are bonds three of them are lone pairs so let's go over to our vesper table here it's all the way here for the electron groups five and we have this two um so all of them actually are the name in general for the electron geometry, electron pair geometry is trigonal by pyramidal. Okay. And now when you have two and three, we have, it even shows a picture actually of it, it's gonna appear linear. Alright? And the reason being is that if I were to draw it out with the electrons, right, it kind of looked like this okay the iodines the fluorines are up here and now the lone pairs form like a perfect ring around it like in this axis. like if this was the planes in fact well actually I'm gonna leave that picture here all right think of the electrons on the x-axis and the fluorines on the y-axis okay you still have the six electrons there the three lone pairs but that's what it would look like at a glance and now this is the part that becomes very specific because you have like in a sense an x and y axis and they're all electrons just pulling at each other perfectly all the i guess the vectors for the x direction are canceled out so if all you have left is to look at the y um, axis okay and the y axis you have a fluorine on one end and another exact fluorine on the other so the vectors for the y axis also cancel out. So all so in total actually for the vectors you have no net movement, okay? Or net charge distribution because the x cancel out and the y cancels out. So with that being said, even though it may not look like it, okay? IF2 is a non polar molecule and you can really only figure this out by drawing its um, well actually by knowing its molecular geometry because if you look at this you will think that oh wait the electrons must uh, be moving or at least pulling in a certain direction but as you see the electrons are only competing with themselves based on this picture okay so that's why they cancel their out electrons will be electrons um, there's well I mean there's no winner from there 
So all that's left on each opposite end are the two fluorines, and you can see for sure that those two will cancel each other out, hence why we end up with a linear shape. So with that being said, yep, it's nonpolar. They draw the Lewis structure, and then um, I hope they mentioned the geometry. They do have symmetrical arrangement, okay, and um, therefore it's nonpolar, but it's actually, I would say this is correct, but like I said, it's key to know the molecular geometry, just so that way you can actually visualize how the uh, molecule is nonpolar. So with that being said, let's move on to question number, let me just solve 10, so 11.